All right, young man. All right, cool. All right, so welcome everybody. This is the April Pro Board meeting. Um, we will start with any public comment. Is anyone like to make any public comment? All right, no public comment. So approval of minutes. I'll motion to approve the March Pro Board meeting minutes. Second by. Any board members want to second those minutes? Yeah, I was muted, but I'll second Paul. Okay. All right, Paul second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, all, all opposed, say nay. All right, minutes are approved. So I'm going to start with, uh, we have a guest speaker who's joining us tonight. Uh, his name is Steve Cottrell. Steve is a Landenberg resident. He uh, is an expert on native plants uh, as well as invasive plants. And Steve uh, has graciously taken the time to speak with us uh, regarding some invasive plant management at Crossan Park um, and possibly other preserves in Franklin Township. So Steve, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi, Greg. Hi, Steve. Hello, everyone. For joining. Uh, yeah, my pleasure. Um, I live uh, right off of Good Hope Road, uh, which is just around the corner from uh, Crossan Park. And I've been there many times over the past few years, uh, uh, I'm able to walk there uh, doing a loop uh, down Flint Hill Road, road cutting through the, the nursery and then going in the back end, coming in the park. And uh, I'm familiar with uh, the vegetation in the park. Um, and uh, just to give you an idea of my background, I'm a uh, uh, licensed pesticide applicator. I have a applicator license in Delaware and Pennsylvania, and I also have business licenses in both states. Uh, and I've been involved with uh, invasive management for, <laughs> excuse me, uh, over 15 years. Uh, I started out doing work for uh, Lancaster, used to be Lancaster County Conservancy. Now they have property in your county, so they call themselves Lancaster Conservancy. Uh, I was working on one of their bigger preserves along the Susquehanna about 15 years ago uh, that was totally infested with Alanthus, the tree of heaven. Uh, I think it was, it was almost deli <laughs> deliberately planted there. At one time, they had an idea that they could sell it for pulp. Uh, so it had completely taken over the property and uh, I was looking for a project and they suggested I do that one. So I spent an entire summer cutting it down and then uh, I moved away. Uh, I was living in Lancaster County at the time. I hadn't gone back until this past uh, fall and I was expecting to see a bunch of regrowth and things I missed. I didn't see a single Lanthus tree in the whole preserve. I think it was over 500 acres. Wow. So I don't know what happened, but uh, I, uh, I, I did the trick. Uh, I followed the Penn State ex extension recommendations for training it. Uh, and uh, most of my training comes from Penn State extension because uh, you have to take the training to get Certified, you have to pass the exams. Uh, I'm certified in four categories. Um, and I'm also doing a lot of work in, in Delaware. Uh, right now, I'm working on a, a 680-acre county property, Middle Run Natural, Middle Run Valley Natural Area, it's called. And it has the same invasives that are in Crossing Park, uh, some different ones, uh, some that that Crossan has, Middle Run doesn't have. But uh, bottom line is I can identify all the invasive plants 
and, and well, all the plants. You have to be able to identify what's invasive and what's not. Because when you're doing this kind of work, you want to make sure that there's native plants that can fill in where the, when the, when the invasives disappear. Uh, because uh, Penn State did a study, uh, just came out uh, a year ago, where uh, near the state college, the state college campus, they intensive, intensively managed uh, a parcel of land removing invasives for a period of years. And they discovered that the areas that were most heavily invested had the native plants come back faster. They'll come back on their own. So uh, if you wanna restore a, a property that's, uh, that's been contaminated with invasives, you don't have to invest in a lot of planting. The trick is just remove the invasives and the natives will come back on their own. Uh, in fact, if you just plant without controlling the invasives, you just threw away your money because the invasives will, will take over. They can, they can outcompete them uh, and uh, it's a lost cause. So my, my estimate is in restoration work, 90% of the work is removing invasives, 10% is planting. If you, if you don't take the invasive problem into account, you're, you're, you're spinning your wheels. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I can identify the plants and I know the proper way to control each of these species. Uh, so there's a number of factors. It's, it's timing, time of year, uh, the, the methods at a certain time of year, you use one method, different time of year, you dis, diff, use a different method, type of chemicals to use. Uh, and then uh, also the, the, the method, there's different methods. There's uh, cut stump, which you do in the winter when there's no foliage. In the summer, you do foliar spray where you uh, split, spray the green vegetation. And um, that you can't do in the winter. So certain species of invasives uh, you uh, do during the growing season. So right now I'm shifting gears for six months of the year, I'm out with the chainsaw doing cut stump where you, you cut, the, cut the plant at the ground, ground level and immediately spray the stump uh, and it knocks it out. And uh, a lot of people don't understand uh, the importance of chemicals. Uh, for most species of invasives, almost all the species of invasives, you cannot kill, you cannot eliminate unless you use chemicals. In fact, if you don't use chemicals, if you just cut, you'll make your problem worse. Because what happens is just cutting without treating triggers a response mechanism and the root system generates sprouts, re-sprouts. So for example, an autumn olive, you cut a single autumn olive stem without treating it, you'll wind up with 10 stems the next year. And a lot of species are like that. Uh, so anyway, at Cross and Park, you've got the full gamut. You've got two species of invasive trees, which I would target it uh, initially. Uh, and then you've got your, uh, your standard mix of invasives, autumn olive, multiflora rose, uh, amor honeysuckle, everywhere. And then you have your invasive vines. Uh, you have um, uh, oriental bittersweet and then uh, Japanese honeysuckle. Um, so this, uh, as I was saying, six months of the year, I was doing cut chainsaw work. Uh, and you do it in the winter because it's hard work. Uh, so you can't do it in the summer because it, it's, you'll get overheated. Uh, plus, when you're in the brush like that, you need protection. You need heavy clothing because uh, you're getting torn up by the brambles. In the summer, you can't wear protection. So you can't get in there uh, to work. Uh, so... 
Uh, and the other thing is in the winter, you don't have the, the greenery to uh, block your view. You want to get to the, the bottom of the, of the plant uh, right above the crown to cut it. In the summer, they're just draped with all the, the vines. Your uh, mala minute, your oriental bittersweet, your porcelain berry, you can't find it. In the winter, all that's, all that's dead, uh, or not dead, I, uh, dormant. So you can get in there and do your work. You've got protection. You're not getting cut up from the thorns. And then uh, you can make a lot of progress. But now I'm sh I just shifted gears. I just finished the chainsaw work. Now I'm starting to use the backpack sprayer. And I'm spraying the, uh, this is a good time of year to get to do some of that because the invasives, most of the invasives from, uh, from Asia, uh, they, they have one thing in common. They, they, they uh, get their foliage earlier, the natives, and they keep it longer in the fall. So there is an advantage to that. When you go in and spray now, you're only going to hit the, uh, your target. You're not going to have off-target damage hitting native plants because they're not in, in, in leaf yet. So this is a good time to go in and spray your... Uh, Japanese honeysuckle vine and uh, your barberry because they leap out early. And there's an advantage in the fall too. Everything else is dormant. Your, your spice bush, all your, all your trees of plants of value are, are bare. So it's easy to find the invasives because they're still in leaf. So, so when you're doing work during the growing season, you have to be very careful because some of these plants are very similar in their bark, you know, and even in the leaves. But in the fall, it's easy. You can yeah. uh, easily find the uh, only thing that's in leaf are the invasives. Steve, can I, can I interrupt? Yes. You said there's two invasive trees in Cross and Park. And yes. you, you mentioned one was Tree of Heaven, I think. What's the second? Yeah, Tree of Heaven, and the other one's Polonia. Polonia, okay. Not a whole lot of them, but you really want to knock them out. And those, I, I'll, I'll go out with a chainsaw in the summer to get, because those are uh, really nasty trees. And, and what, do you, what do you recommend for the multi-floor rows? How do you get rid of that? Well, okay. Um, actually, this is the best time of year to get that. I found out. Uh, well, I, I take it back. Maybe two weeks ago was. Because it's... You, it's not in full leaf yet, okay? But it is green, so it's easy to find. So what I do is wear, you know, a denim jacket, a helmet, goggles, and gloves, and I go in with a chainsaw down low, and I cut the stem. Cut the stem, and there could be 20 of them together. And then I have a spray bottle with 25% uh, glyphosate. Uh, it's a uh, aqueous solution, and I immediately spray, it, and it's dead. It's not coming back. But later on, uh, some of this stuff it's so thick, uh, and you know, if you're not comfortable using a chainsaw, you can do a foliar spray on that. All you need is two percent, and the best time to do that is when it goes into flower. Right now, it's a little too early because there's not enough target. There's, you know, the leaves aren't fully out yet. Uh, but in another couple of weeks, when you see it going in flower, there's plenty of leaf surface there for the chemical to uh, take effect. And that's a, mm -hmm. all you need is 2% uh, glyphosate for that. So you don't recommend like cutting the stem and spraying on the stem with, with a multi flora, do you? Well, no, I just said that this is a good time to do. Uh, oh, okay. Gotcha. Two weeks ago. It was a good time because it's easy to find the stem. In another month, it'll be hard to find the stem because right. the whole plant will be draped with foliage. Gotcha. But when just in late winter, the plants that are alive are, are the stems have a lot of color. So they stand out. So it's easy to find them 
and you're not obscured by a bunch of foliage. You can easily get into that bot, that crown, get in there with the chainsaw. And what I do with the chainsaw, I like if if it's a huge plant, you know, a, a ten foot spread plant, I just use the chainsaw to cut my way in to the bottom, and then I cut it and spray it. And then a few another, and a couple of weeks later, it'll all start turning brown. And uh, as far as clean up, I don't clean up anything. It all decomposes naturally. And the faster these plants grow, like these non-native invasives, the faster they decompose. Hmm. So, so I'm, I've cut down all of my olives that have trunks over 12 inches in diameter. They get that big, believe it or not. And they'll get 25 foot tall and 30 feet in spread. But they'll, in five years, they'll just, you won't see a trace of them. So once you cut everything down, it's going to look like a, a wasteland. But there's hope. If you stay on top, the, the next couple of years, as things come decompose, you, go, you return. Because there's still uh, seeds in the seed bank, in the ground. So you'll get young plants coming up. You, you they're easy to get because they're scattered and they're small. But you stay on top of the invasive and you'll see sprouts of your oak, your maple, and, and your spice bush, and things will start coming back on their own. So your crab apple, it's amazing what, what, what will come back. So, so, so Steve, um, you sound very knowledgeable about it, but what, what are you proposing for Franklin Township um, Pro Committee? Like what? Okay, what well, do you have a volunteer group? I think Not really. mentioned somebody was going in there and cutting vines. Yeah, yeah. That, well, uh, yeah. F, I do that and some volunteers and the FSA does that as well, yes. Okay, well, the, the Pennsylvania rule is if, if you're working with, if volunteers are, or, or anybody who's not licensed is working with somebody who is licensed, and is working under his supervision, they can use chemicals legally. Hmm. Interesting. And then there's another uh, category. It's, it's not a full certification category, but I forget what the, the, the title is. But um, you, if you, you take a minimum amount of training, and then you can do it on your own without the certified person being there. As long as he, he's within reach, he can be at the site within eight hours or something like that. Okay. But you have to, you don't even have to take a test for that. You just, I think uh, I have a business. So what you do is you get added to my business as this uh, special uh, user. But, uh, but I was going to offer to do volu to volunteer. Um, all the work I do is volunteer work. Uh, uh, the bulk of the work is, uh, is in the winter. So it's too late for that now. Well, not winter, but the six month period from say October through April. Uh, but I would be willing to go in a couple of days a week or one day a week and I could, you know, get most of the work, the invasives removed in a year. Frankly, the Crossland Park is relatively small compared to other areas I'm working. Uh, so you go in with a chainsaw, you can clear an acre or two in a, in a day. Depends how thick it is. But, um, <laughs> but right now, uh, what I could do is meet with the people who are interested in volunteering and you can cut vines in, the, in the, any time of year. And what you do with the vines, there's uh, the Oriental bittersweet growing on trees there. I mean, it's really shocking to see what they'll do. They'll bring down trees that are two feet in diameter. I've seen it. You'll have one tree could have 20 vines climbing it, and the vines could be three, four inches in diameter. So um, 
in a heavy windstorm, the weight of those vines can topple a tree. But the primary way those vines kill the tree is they climb to the top and um, they create an umbrella with their foliage over the canopy. And then they suffocate the tree. The tree gets no sunlight. That's typically how, it, how the trees die. And, and up at the top is where, where they flower and fruit. That's where the birds eat all the, the, the berries and then poop it everywhere. And that's why it's growing everywhere, typically around trees, because they perch on trees and, and their, their droppings take root right at the base of the tree. But you can go in there any time of year. And the biggest impact your volunteers could do immediately is to go in there. Uh, you don't need a chainsaw. You can use, a, there's a, a, a curved saw, uh, Japanese design. Uh, uh, I get it from a steel dealer. Uh, very, very effective. It's just a handsaw, uh, maybe 12, 15 inches long. You get a little uh, holster, you put it in there, carry that around, you know, put a little rope on it so you don't lose it. And you can, go, you can cut through a, a five inch bittersweet vine in, in just a few seconds. And have your spray bottle with you, as soon as you cut it, spray that vine and it's dead. And the biggest impact you can make to your park is to save the trees, it's by cutting the vine. And those are visible. Uh, I mean, you know, you don't have to go to the root. You doesn't matter where you cut it. You don't have to go way to the base. Anywhere, anywhere you spray it, that chemical is going to translocate down to the root and kill it. And for the the invasive trees that I mentioned, there's there's only a handful of them. Most of them around the edge uh, mm -hmm. of the, uh, the driveway. Um, I would go in any time. You know, you give me the green light. I'll go in there with the chainsaw. Uh, I won't cut them down. I'll just girdle them. Uh, I don't like cutting trees down. Uh, I mean, it's not necessary. All I want to do is stop their growth. And you can stop their growth just by girdling them. And as immediately after girdling them, I get my 25% glyphosate and I spray the cut all the way around. Hmm. Do that any time of year. So that works on just... That'll work on any tree. And it'll, I've killed dozens of, of polonia, scores of uh, uh, tree of heaven that way. But what you have to do is watch out for re-sprouts. Even with the chemical, these, these trees are so noxious. Even though they're dead, there's some part of the root that'll try to re-sprout. But they just keep an eye out for them the next year or two, and they're easily, you just cut them and spray them, and, and they'll never come back again. Okay, Steve. So then are you going to provide some type of proposal for the pro committee so we can understand what your rates or service would be to okay, well, now, assist okay. us in the future if we move forward? Uh, I'm just trying to understand what we're getting to in the okay. end right here. Well, uh, first of all, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a member, actually I'm the president of the Delaware Audubon uh, society. Greg is also, believe it or not, two members from Pennsylvania are president, vice <laughs> president. Of, uh, the right. uh, but anyway, uh, I'm a bird guy. I'm doing this for the birds. I'm not, I'm retired. Um, uh, I'm self-sufficient. I don't need money. So Jim, actually, he's, he's proposing to volunteer. He's not proposing to charge us. Yes. Right. So uh, volunteer and advise. Steve, I think uh, maybe we'll, we'll um, I think it's a great offer. We could really use your expertise. It's great. I think we'll get together with you out in the field and we'll- Yeah, that's perfect. Any, any interested parties to join us and- uh, Right, and I, a, a good, I can do that anytime and this is a good time. I can take you around to teach everyone how to identify- Right. Okay. Yeah, I think, the methods of control. I think it's a great offer and yeah. Yeah. We it's very generous. I appreciate it, Steve. And, and hopefully we can get you going out there. 
Okay, I'm anxious to do it. I've been uh, anxious to to uh, improve improve the park. It's a great bird area, a uh, beautiful park. I, I've spotted some wonderful bird they have uh, wonderful birds there. Uh, you have Louisiana water thrush down in the <laughs> creek area, which is uh, a bird that's in uh, uh, serious decline. Uh, you know, it's of concern to a lot of uh, organizations, but they're nesting down in, along the creek there. Uh, you have winter wren, uh, uh, Baltimore Orioles in there. Uh, and right in a couple of weeks, you'll be having your uh, uh, warblers uh, coming through. So anyway, uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to clean it up because it's one of my favorite parts. Well, we're, we're very grateful for your, your offering. Yeah. So, thanks. Thanks. Let me, for yeah, th and thanks for coming, Steve. So, let me ask. Um, maybe Jeff or J might know. Is is there any besides like a volunteer form? Is there anything that he would need to do um, to provide those services? Any since he's you know would be doing pesticide application. I think it's the volunteer form and just letting Jeff know or the member of us that. Or even, you know, coordinating through you, Greg, um, right. and even the FSA. I know when we get out, the, the, the crew gets out, um, then primarily been concentrating on Banishire. Um, having an expert, someone knowledgeable is definitely a good idea. So, I yeah, I can provide you with copies of my licenses if you need that here for your paperwork. And I was just going to say that it, if we could please have a copy of your pesticide license. That uh, would absolutely. Be of course, I would, I would do that. Awesome. Well, thanks, Steve. Thanks for coming out and, uh, and we'll be in touch with you. Sounds good. All right. I'm going to sign off then. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So unless anyone had any other input on that, I'll move on. Great. All right, so next up would be the estimates on the projects that um, we've been gathering. So Paul, I, I wanted to ask you first, um, do you, since we're gonna be going over numbers, um, is this something, I mean, I know we've kind of gathered all the estimates, so we're not still getting more in, but should, is this something we can go over? So, or do we need a breakout yeah. session? With a pickleball court, we've got all three estimates in, so I think it's fair to go over them in a public meeting because we're not waiting on any other estimates, so it's not giving any of the bidders an advantage. Right. So I think we're ready to do the pickleball court today. And then um, I don't know your status on the gardens. If you think you have all your numbers in the gardens, then sure, let's go over them. But if you still are waiting on some bidders, then we shouldn't go over them in a public meeting. No, I think we're at the same place with that uh, as well as the pickleball. So. Yeah, I, I just wanted to make sure. Um, all right, so should we, you wanna start with pickleball? Doesn't matter to me. Yeah, um, I, I only have the uh, Lefevre quote electronically and the other two are paper in, in my hand. So I don't know. I just hmm. say the numbers then if that's you know all right with the group. Paul, I emailed them to you and Greg this afternoon. Did you email all three? Cause I only saw the Lefevre one. It's, it's all, all one. it's all in one, right? Yes, sir. Oh, I didn't, I guess maybe I didn't page down enough, Jeff. Yeah, so I, I just took the belt and suspenders approach and sent no, it to I, you. Again. I saw your email called belt and suspenders, but I, I was wondering what that meant. <laughs> I, I only saw the Lefevre one, which I already have. And Greg and Paul, is this the, um, these are the same estimates that we had talked out about at the executive session just with the additional part about having the the part for the pickleball for the um, sleeve to go into the, the cement. Yeah, the, so the yard works and marble estimates have not changed, but the Lefevre estimate, we had to get him to correct it to um, put in a concrete block with each post. He was just gonna core drill it, no block of concrete, but now he has a block of concrete. So Greg, okay. do you wanna share them or do you want me to share them? Or I, I guess I can. Um, yeah, if you want, or it doesn't matter to on, me. Are you on your iPad? Yeah, I'm on my iPad, but. I'll try it. 
All right, give it a try. If you have a problem, I'll do it. I don't know if I have rights. I don't know. Host disabled your sharing. So maybe Jeff could give me sharing rights. Yes, sir. Just give me a couple seconds here. You should be good, Mr. Overton. Jeff doesn't trust people on the uh, <laughs> on the internet. Uh, do you see the fever? Yep. Well, Got it. And. Uh, well, I have two screens up, so I'm not sure. Now do you see the Marvel quote? Uh, yep. Yeah. All right. So so let's start at the bottom here uh, at um, Marvel Masonry. So their quote to um, cut out the concrete. So, so for those of you who are not part of the pro committee, just to give you some background, in the pickleball courts, formerly the skate board park, the fenced in area there. We have one pickleball court set up and there's, um, it's become a very popular sport and there's, there's often a waiting line we're told. And uh, a lot of people are uh, asking if we can reorient the court so that we can fit three courts in that area instead of just one. And that would accommodate a lot more users. And so we've been working on this for several months to try to get some decent pricing to make that happen. Um, so, we have this one from Marvel Masonry. The idea is we would rotate the court 90 degrees and then add two more beside it. It also takes care of the, the issue that right through the middle of the pickleball court is uh, two expansion joints in the concrete. They're filled with a polysulfide caulking material that's in bad shape. And so that, that's kind of in the field of play and that, that's not a good uh, situation. So by rotating the court, it's parallel to the joint and the joints are between courts. And so that would eliminate the joint. It would get it out of the field of play. So that's another benefit to doing this. So here, um, Mr. Marvel has, has suggested to do um, $7,000 to cut out a, a two foot by two foot block, dig it three feet deep, fill it full of concrete and set the post and that'll hold up the nets. And then in the center, we cut out a small one foot square to do the center anchors on the, um, on the net. And then um, remove the existing post and pour them flush for another 3000. And then he's got a subcontract from old Philadelphia attached. Is that attached? Here it is for old Philadelphia for another thousand dollars to um, cut out the old sealant, the polysulfide sealant and put in a Sikaflex with the closed cell backer rod in the joint so that we'd reseal those joints. So just this 1000 here, this sidewalk is a separate issue. I could probably make that bigger, sorry. So it's just a thousand. So if you add up Mr. Marvel and his subcontractors uh, it's, I have $14,000. Is that, Jeff, is that what you came up with for the total? Oh, I'm going to rely on your math. All right. Well, it's, if it's, I had, it's 14, I had, yeah, just under 14,000, 13, seven something. Right. So, so, um, or wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's yard works. I have, I have 14,060 for, for Marvel. Yep. Uh, you're right. 14,060 for Marvel. Okay, so now let's move on to yard works, and 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 I feel that's uh, you know that's unaffordable. That's that's too much. So then for um, Jimmy Durazio and yard works, now notice the last quote was a lump sum, fixed price. This quote from yard works is a time and material proposal, and you see the last line here. This estimate could be more or less. So Jimmy's proposing that he would do the work, you know, by the hour and uh, we would pay whatever it was, whether it's more or less. And in his estimation to realign the three courts, he would need this kind of equipment and this many labor hours for a total of 12,280 to do the uh, pickleball courts. And then an additional 
1,480 to do the uh, sealing the two expansion joints on the pickleball courts. So to add them together is around $14,000, right? I didn't see, it, or it's not clear to me, it's not specifically spelled out if this includes line painting. You know, we, we wanna repaint the pickleball court lines on the new courts. His so, estimate does not include line painting. Okay, so that would be an addition. All right, the third bidder Um, I'm getting to the top here, is Lefevre Concrete from Quarryville. And, you know, Lefevre, this is, I think they're in more line, the, more in line with what they do, right? They're, they're a concrete contractor. And you can see here in the handwriting, remove the center three holes in the court, replace with new concrete, saw cut six new holes, two foot by two foot by 36 inches deep, install the new pipe in the center, pour with concrete, core drill for the tie downs in the middle and place a bolt for the tie down. Remove the existing line paint and restripe all three new quartz. And then also here the last sentence, recalk with Sikaflex two joints in the center for 120 feet total. And his total proposal is 2000 labor, 2300 material, that's 4,320. So it's, it's quite a difference. And, you know, we called him and got clarification, you know, that he understands what it is and we had him rewrite the proposal to make it clear. And so this is the rewritten proposal. So uh, anybody have any questions on it? So, um, you know, I, I think this is more affordable and um, I, I would suggest we propose doing it and, and, uh, and recommending it to the board. But um, I see we have Jack on the line, Mr. Pickleball, I like to call him. So Jack, do you have any comments or any thoughts on what we propose to do to reorient the courts and fix the cracks? Uh, the one comment I have, <clears throat> can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, the one comment I have is you still have to pay for the nets, the three nets, correct? Right. That's right, and, and we also have to hang the nets. So this proposal does not include buying the two extra nets or hanging them. Okay. Also, also we would need to do the posts as well, correct? Uh, yeah, like, he's only, you're right, Jack, I think Jack is talking about the net and the post. This guy okay. gotcha. putting in a, a pipe, um, a pipe in the ground like it has now, and then it's a sleeve, and then we slide the new post into the sleeve. Correct. The posts per set are $285 per set, and the pickleball net is $99 a piece. Right. So, so if, if we add to this the nets and the posts, we're, you know, I was going to say we, we suggest $5,000, right, to, to get the job done. But I was going to ask Jack if your group would volunteer installing the nets and the and the post, Jack. That if we could provide you a hole in the ground, a sleeve that you can insert the post and and install the nets. Yeah, that is not a problem, Paul. I mean, I, in fact, I've I've looked at the you know the current net and it looks pretty easily easily you know maneuvered to get the right height. Yeah. I agree, and and uh, you know, hopefully, have somebody handy in your group that would be willing to do that, and that would save us some installation money. Yeah, and, we. Uh, I think Jeff, you would order the same style net that's there, right? Correct, sir. Yeah, we we can easily do that. Great. All right, and one one reason I also rounded to five thousand is um, uh, on the east side of the fence the bottom of the fence is pulled away from the bar. And, and uh, Jeff, I would ask you to have yard works go in there and, and use some wire to tie it back to the bar. You know, just to, it, it should be like a three hour project just to, because I don't think it's safe. The way the wire, the fence is curled up, you know, someone could get some serious uh, cuts on that. Um, and Paul, Paul, I understand Paul. where you're coming from, but one of the things I was trying to think about to save money, not take work away from Jim, but to save money, 
um, would it be to have the FSA do that if we could buy the supplies? Yeah, or, or maybe Jack wants to do it if you want to go the volunteer route. Yep. Paul, is this something oh. that, that needs to be addressed for the tennis courts too? Is it something that is happening at the tennis courts or just the pickleball court? I, I didn't notice it at the tennis courts, but it's pretty severe at the pickleball courts. Okay. Now, to be more specific, because I was talking to um, Bob Magnus, we are going to address the tennis courts too. So that will be on the FSA's list or Jack. If Jack wants to do it, I think that's wonderful if they want to buy into the project. Okay. So Jim, Jim, you're the FSA rep. Are you, are you okay with that? Is that a good volunteer project for your group? I think, I think we could do that too. I mean, that doesn't seem like a big, big job. Yeah, that shouldn't be. It just should be just some wire ties on it. Um, Usually they're, they're aluminum straps that bend around and bend and pull it back down. So right. that shouldn't be an issue as long as Jeff can get what we need. So. Yep, I will get what you need. And if Jack, you have any suggestions as to specifics or Jim, just email me and I will get it. It's not a problem. Yep, yep. And, and you, you talked to Bob about it already, so it shouldn't be an issue. You know, and just so you, so the, the 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 pro board knows, Bob Magnus is our rep on FSA who coordinates with Jeff on all our service projects. So yeah, I just I just he's the point person. But you're the contact uh, on the pro board, right? Right, right. So yeah, it's it's not an issue. It should be a simple repair and uh, yeah, and, and if you're making a day of it, maybe you guys could check the backstops on the on the little league fields or the um, you know baseball fields. Yeah. You're reading my mind, Mr. Everton. Yeah. And there's darn fastballs into the chain link fence. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> so can we just make sure we have that number down? Because for some reason, I, I wrote down 5,500 before. And page down a little bit. Is there a page two on this one? What's – is this – no, so this is okay. That's for the pickleball. The other one's for the sidewalk. Okay. Well, no, this is the original pickleball right here. Oh, okay. Pickleball. The no, thirty-one. To... Uh, this excluded the concrete. We had him add the concrete, so it went okay. from two thousand to four thousand three hundred. Okay, so and just just page back up then. So forty-three hundred, forty-three twenty for pickleball. Yeah, he's putting pipes in. He's fixing the concrete, removing, patching, and painting. And, and painting the lines. You have, to add, you have to add in two nets. Yeah, and right. Yeah. We have, well, well, we have to add that in on all the proposals. I don't think that the nets were included in any of them. So, yes. what's yeah, the, and we, what's the net? We had the nets for uh, it looked like they were 99 for the nets, and the posts were 285. Okay, 285 a pair for a pair, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so they got to install the, the six new three-inch pipes in, in the center, so they'll have pipes there, but three-inch, that might be what you need. No, they're not just – the pipes that hold the net are not just pipes. They they have a ratcheting – Okay, so, so this is a, 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 a pin, a three-inch pin, more so that the, the new pipes would fit over top of. Yeah, so if you add the, the cost of Lefevre and the nets and the posts – it puts you more like a 5,100. Okay. Yeah. 51. Thank you, Jennifer. I was trying to do that there. Yeah. And like I said, all the other proposals, I didn't see anything with nets in there. So they were just doing the court them itself and the, the, the playing field. So. So we're at 5,100. Greg, is that, do you know where you got your 55? I think that might've been an estimate we had if we had to hire somebody to install it last time. Okay. And that's okay. So, and we're including the, the, the posts, all the posts we need and all the nets with, that we need. So Greg, do you have a calculator? If we just say it real quick, it's 4320 oh, plus 200 for both nets. 4320, 200. And then I just rounded it. So in 285 a set. So there'll be 285 plus 285. Yeah, 5090. Yeah, so I think if we ask for 5,100 or. Okay. Yeah, I don't know where I got that number then. 
I feel like we rounded up if we were have to get it installed. And I'm not sure if Jeff had just had estimates. We didn't have like the exact numbers of the. All right, well, let's let's move on though. We we know the ballpark and our our, our job is to recommend Lefevre to the board. Yep. And then, you know, Jeff lets the contract and the numbers and. Yep. Does he say when, when he may be available to do this or how long it'll take? I don't know, Jim. First step was to get it approved and passed okay. the pro board. So I'll be in contact with Mr. Lefevre in the next couple of days. Yeah, I would think just that work, it should just be the longest issue would be the concrete curing. Um, I would look at it. Um, yeah. Everything else should be pretty straightforward, cutting and filling and so. While we're here though, um, I want to, on his old proposal, we had asked him to look at sealing uh, a caulk around the bathrooms building. Oh, Paul, that, before you start that, can we just vote on this proposal real quick and then? No, I, I want to I combine them if you don't You want to combine them? Okay, sounds good. Well, I want to propose it and then you guys tell me if you want to combine them. All right, I, I guess we can do one at a time. Right? All right, so I'll make a motion then to award uh, the fever, um, the work for 4320 to reorient the pickleball courts and add two courts and repaint the lines as it says in the proposal, which is undated by the way, it's just March. And then um, add uh, Jeff buying the nets and then the volunteers will install the nets. I dated it at the top, Paul. Any second? I'll second, second. that, Paul. All right, so Kyle, did you catch that? Yes, I have it. All right. All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, so it sounds like we'll make a recommendation to the board to award this contract. So I'll write up an email summarizing the three proposals so the board can have a clear understanding of why or what we're getting. Okay, great. All right, so the idea <clears throat> was, uh, you know, Jeff's pointed out that the building at the sidewalk is in bad shape. We're getting water between the sidewalk and the building, which can heave, uh, you know, when it freezes and stuff. But uh, it also looks nasty the way the old caulk is all torn out. And so a proposal from, from the fever is right down here at the bottom, all around the building, caulk sidewalk, sidewalk joint with expansion areas 1180 i can't tell if that's 88 or 80 dollars but somewhere around dollars. yeah i think it's eight all right and so that's where i would stop his next proposal is to pressure wash the, the area and seal it with deco 20 concrete sealer i don't feel we need that for another thousand dollars i don't i don't see uh, a benefit of sealing the sidewalk so that's a clear sealer that just makes the concrete more impenetrable. And that's important if you're in a warehouse or in a slaughterhouse or something where you need to worry about the floors, but I don't need that here. So yeah, as many times have I been out there, I don't think it needs it. I don't, it doesn't look like no, it even needs to be pretty, pressure washed. Yeah. So and you said um, it's with the Sikaflex. That's what you want it. It's the same material. Yeah. Sikaflex. Yeah. That's a uh, okay. poly, polyurethane caulk. So that's, um, a good caulk for uh, expansion joints, lots of something like 200% elongation. So it moves with the concrete. All right. So um, anybody want have any comments or thoughts on this, Jeff, this was your, your, your idea. You, you uh, in favor of the fever and um, wait before, before that, we did have another bidder come in right about the same number. So we, you know, do we do have a price check but I don't think it's appropriate to award one bid of the 1100 and then, and then this one, the pickleball court. You know, they probably would charge more to come out and do such a thing. So my intent is that we award the same contractor both so that they can have one mobilization cost. Right. I agree. I would agree with yeah. that. Yeah, I think if we go back to the other bidder, Marvel, and say we want you to do just the caulking for eleven eighty eight, I, I think he would uh, change his price. Right. Okay. Uh, 
Should we vote on that or do we need need to, is there any questions or? No, I make a motion that we uh, issue the order for the seal as presented. All right, I'll second that. And go ahead, Jim, you wanna, you made the motion. Okay, yeah, I made a motion. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> uh, that, uh, aye. 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 <laughs> right. so, so one more comment on this. I know this isn't an exciting project, the uh, caulking, it's not a high priority, but I also don't consider it a capital project. I consider this like a maintenance project, like fixing Agree. a smoking lamp, right? This is just general Routine maintenance in the building. And, and if we yeah. don't, if we don't do it, we will end up having a capital project to replace the sidewalk eventually. Right. And Paul, that's why I just wanted to have it separated out from the pickleball court so they could see the pickleball <clears throat> court is one thing and that this is more of a maintenance issue right. so that it doesn't get tied up with the pickleball court. Okay. Yep. All right. So um, that's all I have on pickleball. The only other outstanding one I have in, in uh, with Jeff is the, the sealing the the parking lot, but we do not have it. We still only have two quotes. Jeff's gone out to like five bidders and we don't have, no one's interested. They're not, they're not returning his calls. So I don't think we should discuss the two we have. I think we'll wait another month to try to get more bidders. And, and Jeff commented, you know, they like to do the ceiling in the summertime anyway. So it's, you know, we're not in a rush to get it done before the, the spring is over or something. But if anybody on the call knows of a, a driveway ceiling company that's more, you know, commercial, we'd like to hear from you if you have a recommendation. I, I just have a question for Jeff. If they do the ceiling in the summer, that doesn't that interfere with any sports practices or anything that, that would be being used at Crossing Park? Well, it? it always has the potential to do that. But um, one of the things I think they could do is they could park over at Franklin Preserve and now we have a nifty trail from Franklin Preserve into the park. Now, I can't say I know this for a fact. This is just a general rule. The general rule is they have practices during the week and games on the weekends. So there's a possibility we could um, still schedule that for this year. I know others think otherwise, but um, even if we schedule it for next year, it's pretty hard to pick two or three days because you're dealing with weather and other work schedules too. So it's just, it's something we're going to have to try and work the best we can. So, so Jennifer, it's a good question. And we walked out to, um, in Franklin Preserve, right next to the driveway is another entrance where there used to be a house and some sort of maybe a mushroom house or something. So there's a large concrete slab there that we could put as designate as temporary parking if we close the entrance for our two days to do this job. And then, and then uh, you know, make a path through the uh, hedges to get into Cross and Park, right? So it's, it's quite a short little walk there, maybe a hundred yards. But, and if they do it in the summer, there, would, there seems there would probably be less practices than there would be in the spring. So well, they put it on. I, we actually have the uh, park schedule and we can bring that up when, when we're ready to decide, right? But um, anybody who's practicing in the upper fields or wants to use the playground, I don't think it's a problem for them to walk an extra hundred yards, right? It's not- I don't think so either. I think it sounds perfect. I will admit it would be quite a convenience if you're on the lower field, you know, what we might call the soccer field down below. That's a hike. So, you know, we'd have to coordinate with the league or whoever has that uh, rented at that time and tell them, you know, we want to use, we want to close the upper parking lot for, for these days. And uh, you either reschedule your practice to some other park or, you know, don't have practice that night. And, you know, it's their choice or they can walk in. That's their third choice. So I think it's doable. And, and um, if we give them enough warning, I think they'll be fine working with us on that. And for what they pay for our park, you know, I, I'll probably be corrected, but you know, it's like a hundred bucks a year or something. You know, it's like they can give us a break on sealing the parking lot. Yeah, I think it sounds good, but and unfortunately, we just have to wait for more estimates. So, correct. Well, I was hoping somebody would speak up. Anybody have any ideas on a seal coating company? 
Come on, someone's got to get their driveway done out here. <laughs> All right, well. Uh, I could actually, I have a buddy who does some commercial stuff and, and he's out of Hocus and I could check with him. I don't know if he does seal coating, but um, it's a pretty big company. So he might, he might be able to help us out. I just thought about that. Great. A bucket in a broom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that's what I didn't want. You know, I don't want, <laughs> I don't want the mom and pop buck on a broom to do our seal coating because it also includes restriping the parking spaces, right? And this, this again is a maintenance item. Our lot is cracked. It hasn't been taken care of since it was, in, you know, installed, I don't know, 20 years ago or something, 25 years ago. So it's time for a coat. Try to uh, keep the weather out. All right. All right. We'll, we'll discuss that in more length when we get to third quote. Cool. That's all I have. Hey, hey Paul, yep. I have I have one other comment that I just thought about <clears throat> pickleball courts. Uh, when yeah. you have the net set up, the, the middle of the net is is not as high as the ends, and right. there is a hole that is drilled into the concrete in the center that holds the net down. Yes. And I don't know if that's something that they're going to put in. No, it's it's right here in the in the uh, in the quote. He's got it. He's got it in the quote to um, see install new three inch pipe in centers and pour with concrete core drill for net tie down place bolts in sleeve for tie down. Can you okay, that's on the that's on the ends, but not in the center. No, no, a tie down is in the middle. Okay, tie down. Okay, I see it. See, it says in centers. Okay. In centers. Pull. I got you. I missed that. And would the, the one in the center, would that still stay the same? Because we're just spinning the net 90 yeah. degrees? Yeah, I didn't want to tell him that, but he's going to have a savings here because he says remove all the old ones. And I'm, well, you don't have to remove the center one because it's just. Right. Gonna... We'll still use that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing, it's your turn. All right, so let's move on to the gardens. Actually, do you wanna share again that, that spreadsheet I sent over? Or I can, I just might have a, a couple steps to go through there. Uh, I'll try. I to... just made you the co-host, Mr. Sachs. All right. Hmm. See here. Did you get it? I just brought it up if you want me to share it. Yeah, I don't know why my my mail's not loading. All right. Maybe you try it. All right, give it a give it a try if you can. Yeah, I'm trying to find the right screen to share. So do you see an Excel sheet? Yep. Got it. All right, cool. So just to give some background, um, we're discussing the area referred to as the healing gardens, which is located opposite the pickleball courts on the other side of the parking lot there. Um, it's roughly a, a 50 by 100 square foot area. Uh, that was a garden previously. Um, and I guess due to uh, maintenance or, or problems with whatever the plantings were, has since been cleared and removed. So it's it's right now it's an empty garden bed um, with some paths, mulch, couple planters and benches. Um, so it's it's a blank cam canvas for a garden. Um, so we've, after a lot of discussion, have gone over and decided that it's a perfect spot for a native planting garden. 
um, which will be a benefit to pollinators. Um, it'll help with water, uh, storm water runoff, um, which actually, side note, I went over there last rainstorm and the whole place was completely, completely flooded. So it's, it's definitely an issue. Um, and now that we're, we're doing all these other paving and repaving, um, you know, this will help, help counteract the, the runoff there. Um, so, so we've got a bunch of quotes here. Uh, I'll start with the top one here is from Maffey Landscape Design. This is a landscape designer who would basically do the entire projects from start to finish. Um, his, and you'll see, we got a couple in there that are, are similar to the other project, much higher than, than what we were looking to spend. Well, um, so his, that. what's that? Oh. Uh, so that, so Maffey Lanks, Landscape Design came in at 15,000, uh, which was a minimum for the de design and install. Yeah, Not to interrupt you, Greg, but someone sounds like they need to mute their, so can you ask somebody, somebody has it off mute and there's a lot of background noise. I'm having a hard time hearing Greg. All right. Maybe. I'm, yeah. I'm working on that. I, I okay. them. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. So, so Matt, so, so that was Matthew. Next was red tail restoration. Um, he broke it down um, and was willing to do a design and install or does, you know, just a install um, with other designers. So he was willing to work with us on, on the amount of work that he put in. And he uh, estimated it at $40 per hour. That's what his rate comes in at. Um, the note I put in there, he estimated um, for him to do the, the whole project, he estimated uh, 90 hours for the install and then 10 hours for design. So 100 hours total if he was gonna go, you know, do, do the whole project. Um, third was green weaver landscapes. Um, they also, uh, wanted to do the whole design and install. Um, they're, they're also more of a, a commercial landscape um, and I guess residential as well, but they came in between 10 to 20,000, similar to the first one. Um, and design was much lower, 960 to 1920. But again, they, I think that was tied into them doing the entire project. Um, which was a minimum 10,000. So then we were able to uh, speak with somebody from Natural Lands, who's a conservation organization, um, I believe the largest one in, in our area. And they have a uh, on-site landscape architect who we spoke with and was willing to do the design um, and is, but they don't do the install. So the way their, their estimate works is um, they, they offer a 50% match, which is through the William Penn Foundation. So her estimate came in at 3,200. This is for the design, but it also includes, um, which is very important, a maintenance schedule um, where she's willing to work with you know, our volunteers or whether, you know, it's our public works who, who's doing any kind of maintenance, um, as well as helping us with plant, proper plant selection, um, managing the storm water runoff and, uh, and just getting us going in the right direction. So hers was 3,200, but that was minus a 50% match. So her, her estimate came in at 1,600. Um, I asked her, you know, if she could give us a ballpark for what the plant cost would be. Um, and those she, she mentioned would be between about three to 4,000. And this is depending on, um, you know, how many plants, the design. Um, I know we, we probably were gonna put a couple of trees in the center. Um, so it's, you know, depending on which, which plants, that type of stuff. So low, low end 3,000, higher end 4,000. 
Um, we also spoke with Signature Landscapes. Um, he does do design work, but he, you know, the estimates he gave us were more on doing the physical work of removing the old mulch, um, freshening that up, removing some of the old, or, you know, re redoing some of the old stones. Um, we went over, there's a lot of rotting wood boards or beams that are kind of framing the gardens. Um, and we, we ideally would like to recycle um, some of the older, some of the ones that are there and replace the rotting ones with, uh, with the, the other ones. Um, the, the current setup, I'll try to describe it. It's, it's basically like an octagon and there's four entrances from each side with like a center area for, which is kind of ideal for a tree or shrub. Um, so we were considering uh, removing two of the entrances and that way we could actually reuse some of those boards and saving us costs. Um, so that estimate was $530, which seemed pretty reasonable. Um, and that was removing the old stones, the wood. Uh, that was also removing a few shrubs in the shrub wall, which is facing the uh, parking lot, which will provide an easier entrance, um, much more accessible. Um, we've mentioned before that many people don't even know that space is back there because they pull in the parking lot and just see a large, long wall of shrubs. So um, that included that as well. Um, right. His other, I brought it up so you can. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so there you'll see there the shrub wall is on the uh, the northern part there, um, and th there's a couple of planters there, so it's ideal for for an entrance there. Um, it connects right to the pathway, and it would take minimal effort just to clear some of the shrubs, and uh, you know put put some stone down or something. Okay. So if you can go back to the, all right, cool. So next uh, was another estimate from Signature, which was to update the, the mulching um, and add some new stone in there. And that was the 1020 estimate. Um, I, I also obtained a, another estimate from North Creek Nurseries, who is a local um, nursery. Um, and this was specifically only for, for the plants. Um, and they estimated it at to be 3390. So if you, you know, you, you compare that to the estimate from natural lands, which is, you know, it's similar um, for what the cost would be. And that's, again, that's just for the plants, no design, no installation, um, just the plants, we would, you know, have to do it from there. So, you know, the way I look at it is it's kind of a, a piecemeal project. Um, you know, it's, it's much cheaper to go with, with, uh, I would say natural lands over, um, Maffey or green weaver. Um, you know, they'll, they'll be helping us out with the de design, um, you know, make, making sure we, we, uh, we select the right plants and, uh, work on the stormwater management. Um, and then we can, you know, have signature, do the actual stone and mulch work, uh, kind of the grunt work of the, of the job, um, and then have Redtail do the actual installation of the plants. Um, I'll add that, you know, we're, we've, I've reached out and obtained some volunteers who are interested in helping out. So we're gonna tap into volunteers as much as possible. And if anyone's on the call who's, you know, interested in, in making this a successful project, uh, we welcome volunteer help. Um, you, Craig, you so, yeah, go ahead. Oh, Greg, yeah. so I, um, I, I know you and I had talked about this before, but I just done some rough math. And um, I don't, I, this is, I guess, what I would propose is um, if we went with natural lands, so that's $1,600, and then their estimated cost of plants is 3000 and we went with half of the price of Redtail, 
And then we went with signature for the grunt work, like you said, um, I get to $5,500. Um, and that's based on subtracting the $2,500 do donation we were going to get. Right. So, yeah. I didn't, I didn't touch on that yet. So, so if, which if we is did that math, yeah. does that make sense to you? Does everybody? So if I did 40 hours times 45 is $1,800 for red tail plus 1600 for natural lands plus 1550 for a signature plus 3000 for plants is 7950 minus 2500 gets us to 5450 but i honestly think that maybe we could even start with less plants and build on it and maybe ask the board of supervisors for 5000 or maybe 5500 i guess it would be depend on what you guys wanted to do Can and that would get us can you say this again? I want to type them in here. Sure, sure. So um, is that okay, Greg, if I do that? Is that, yeah. I don't want to step on yeah. your toes. I, I mean, just know you and I had talked about it, but. No, well, you're basically wait. saying what I was, what I was me, proposing. Yeah, so go ahead. Tell me what's the match? We we pay half and they pay half? Is that what that So is? yeah, so it's, a, it's a grant. Government? What's that? Is that the DCNR grant or it's them? Natural no, this lands? is through Natural Lands and they they have the ability through, it's called, called the William Penn Foundation. Oh, ah, okay, okay. And they're, yeah, they would provide 50% um, of what the cost would be. So yeah, that would come down to 1600. Yeah, so um, I'm not trying to talk over Greg, but then I figure Greg could check the numbers why I'm saying them and you tell me if I get it wrong. Yeah, go ahead. So, so 40 hours. Oh, not so 40. So it's $40 an hour and we're suggesting instead only using them for 45 initially. So 40 times 45 hours is $1,800, Paul. Right. 40 and times 50 hours? 45 hours. We're saying if we did half of the 90. Yeah. And just to be clear, we're, you know, we're trying to cut into our costs and, and hope that we can, you know, do it with volunteer work. Um, yeah. So yeah. So that's the goal there. Oh, perfect. Paul's adding it right in. Awesome. So, so then that's eighteen hundred. Forty times forty. Okay. And then the sixteen hundred from natural lands. Yep. And then I have it as fifteen fifty total from signature. So one thousand five hundred fifty. That's both of these. Yeah. And 10, 20. And then I think we should go with more like 3,000 in plants to start with. Yeah, and that might cover us. Um, you know, I, we I might think. See, yeah, we might have to add stuff next year, you know, year after year. Right. Yeah, we might have to put stuff in here and there, but ideally we can we can get it all in there. Um, and, you know, it's it's as far as installing gardens, this is definitely late in the season. So, um, plant availability is going to be, uh, you know, a concern there. So we'll we'll see what's actually available. Um, and just if I can touch on the donation for those that don't know, um, we had somebody um, come to us with a memorial foundation um, looking to support a garden, and they're offering a twenty five hundred dollar one time donation. Um, with an ad additional $750 per year for five years uh, to provide maintenance. So going forward, I know maintenance is a big concern with a lot of people. Um, that'll, that paired with some volunteer work, I think would, would set us up for a successful install there. So, um... I was looking on the other screen here to try to find our priorities list and I can't find it. And um, do you have that, Greg? What our priorities? Yeah. Are? I yeah, I have it down. Because yeah, so you know, we're we're talking about a lot of money on these couple projects, and we want to make sure that uh, this is something we really want to spend money on. I think it was pretty high on the priority list, but yeah, uh, we actually we have, have this as number. We have this as number two. Um, tennis courts was one, which uh, has been approved in the March meeting. Um, so we kind of did this out of order because pickleball and comfort station was number three. All right. So these are our top three, tennis court, healing garden, and pickleball, right? Correct. Yes. And so um, 
There's also mentioned that maybe maybe there's some support for this from a COVID relief fund, but I'll let the supervisors figure that out, right? Well, I don't I don't know if this qualifies or maybe not. Yeah, and my only argument was if we get it down to this five thousand or fifty five hundred dollar mark, it, it makes it seem like the healing gardens are very equal to the need of the pickleball court, and it it keeps each project, you know around the same amount of money. It's not the healing gardens are more, the pickleball courts are more, but it makes everybody happy that we're, you know, everybody gets some money, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, and I, go ahead, Paul. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, I feel, you know, I feel comfortable that we did the legwork and, you know, coming in at 5,500 5, um, is much less than a lot of these landscape designers wanted to do for a typical installation. So, so yeah, I, and Greg, I, I can't remember the name of it, but the natural land said that eventually this will also help with the runoff. And I guess that was a concern she had mentioned, you know, we're, we're, we're repaving we the, would, the we would parking get, lot. We get credit towards stormwater. Yeah. Right. And especially because with the pickleball court and the tennis court and the, and the parking lot, all of this would be help credit towards the stormwater. So I think this would, the natural, the healing gardens would help that with all of those, paved surfaces so close by. Well, they, yeah, yeah but what, what we're doing to all those paved surfaces doesn't hurt us because we're not changing the amount of impermeable surface, right? We're just resealing them. Right. But this this does give us supposedly some uh, stormwater credit. It's probably pretty small on a, you know, acre measurement, but. Right, but she said that eventually that the relationship would be there and then in the future they could, where we had talked about the dog park before, yeah that she saw that as some future um, uh, ability to get credits for that. And then starting with the healing gardens that would work towards that, that area too. Right. And she was interested in maybe helping us with credits, you know, down the road with that. So, so I, on this proposal, we have somebody doing the um, design work that's red tail. Is that right? Or are they doing the install? Uh, Natural lands would be the designer. And what's um, red tail doing? So, I, yeah, I didn't mention that. So Natural Lands, the one of their uh, their caveats would be that they have a list of approved install installers. So Redtail is is on their list of installers. Um, so we you know we work we'd work with him on actually getting getting the plants installed, um, doing some you know weed invasive or not invasive but weed management there. This so yeah, nat so natural lands design, red tail install. Install the plants? Install the actual plantings, yeah. As well as, you know, weed management. The weed management's gonna be the hardest from the start. You know, every, as it goes on, the plants will grow and the weeds will, will fade, fade out, so. So some of this 45, 40 hours, or, or no, I got this backwards, some of this, 45 hours is for maintenance for that first year. Yeah, weeding. Yeah, I'd say I'd say installing and weeding. Okay. And then, you know, going forward we, we do have that 750 per year donation, which will help with additional weeding. Right. Um, so. All right. And then um, they're designing and then demo install hardscape. Is that right? And then, and this is buying the plants. Uh, yeah, that was, I mean, that's not necessarily where we would go through. Um, Natural Land said that she would she would do the work on that and research and tell us where to you know the best place to get the plants. That was just an actual estimate that I got from North Creek, just straight from the, you know buying the plants from them directly. So the, the plant estimate would be I mean it, it depends on the design. That's why she wasn't able to give us an exact number on this on the plants. Um, it depends on availability as well as, you know, how, you know, the design of it. So I, I suggest you, you go in with this, you know, if, if, the, if the group votes on this, 
but then but then propose that after the design is done, after the Natural Lands makes the design, that you go over to the your group of gardening volunteers or maybe the FSA again and see if they can do any of this, either the plantings or removing the old timbers and redoing the mulch, you know, any volunteer hours that could cut down any of these three numbers. Uh, I'm right. Sorry, these three numbers. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and that's, you know, that was the goal with um, Redtail because he estimated it 90 hours for, for all the work and you know, we're trying to at least cut that in half where we can do volunteer work. But yeah, I mean, the more the more we can do and the more money we can save, the better for sure. So is there any, any other questions or comments on? So just a clarification. So the $3,000, um, Paul has it next to North Creek, but can we write North Creek slash um any nursery so like we're not like tied to just having it be north creek right yeah yeah i mean that was north creek's estimate but was that a discounted estimate because I, I, I thought we uh, yeah we definitely asked him for that i don't know if no. that's actually a discounted estimate but <laughs> you know i i told him who was for they they said they were familiar with franklin township and 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 great and um signature had also offered to, to sell us to get us plants at cost too right so, right so i think at the, the bottom line is we'd be getting the plants at cost whether it be from north creek signature or from who something that somebody that natural lands recommends but we're not right. tied to the nursery um just yet exactly but the recommendation from natural lands was to get a commitment letter for the five thousand dollars and that alone would get the, the design plan started, if I understand correctly, Greg, when we met with her. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're looking, yeah, basically, you know, we got to take the first step before we, before they put in the hard work of designing it and all that. So, so yeah, they're looking for a commitment. Um, and then we can kind of get the ball rolling on it. All right, well, I'll, uh, I'll save this and send it back to you. Um... Yeah, I appreciate all the edits. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, why don't you, do you want to make a motion? Sure. Yeah, so I'll, I'll make a motion to um, put 5,500 or recommend 5,500 using red tail restoration um, for install, using natural lands for the, for the design and signature landscapes um, for like I said, the grunt work of, of the project. And I'll, and I'll, I'll second that and asking the, the board of supervisors for that $5,500 to get started, I mean, not to get started, to, you know, to basically for us to budget the project. I mean, it sounds like it'll be a lot more work for Greg, but um, with that commitment letter, yeah, and I, we'll get started, so. I had to jump off for a couple of minutes. I had another call. We still have those timbers. I don't know if it was mentioned from Dave that we could potentially, uh, Kirsty Heimer, that we could potentially utilize up there. So yeah, and, that could and limit. I still have to, yeah, I still have to work with Dave to get those. The only thing that um, I would say Signature said is he thinks he can use a lot of them and right there in place. And that would, I think, they're already pre drilled. Um, so then it would save a lot of the extra work of having to like bring in the new timbers and they kind of would match the other timbers that are in place already. Yeah, so I think between those two, I don't have any money on the actual timbers. Um, I know, I think somebody mentioned that the ones that aren't appeared rotted, um, you know, once we pull them out, they might be rotted. But so, we'll, you know, we wouldn't really know until we really get into doing the work. And, but, and we also have a donation of uh, Riverstone. Right. Yep. And that was mentioned um, as well. And I think it was a pretty large amount of stone. And I think you had given, Greg, you gave a picture to um, Natural Lands and she was gonna see what she could work into the design. Yeah, yeah, I sent that over. Um, so, that, you know, they're, they were made aware of, of that. And yeah, they're, they're kind of larger stones. So I don't know if they would work for a path, but you know, they no, could help. Not, not for a path, but for, um 
you know, visual separation between the path and the planting would be nice or right. some sort of pattern, some sort of pattern around some of the planting areas. Yeah. I, th I, th I think they would also be nice. Yeah. Like along the, the perimeter to maybe keep some of the mulch from running off. We, there's a big yeah. runoff issue with the mulch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah definitely. Is Eli on the, on the line? Can you tell us who the, the donation was from? I want to put the person's name here. I want to be. Oh yeah, certainly. Uh, so donation was by a man of the name of G. Matthew Brown, uh, George Matthew Brown. Matthew. And the, I wrote down that the foundation is the Nancy D. Davidson Memorial Foundation. That'd be correct, Greg. What'd right, you okay. Nancy D. E. Two E's, E. E. Davidson. David, I forgot the D. There you go. All right, yeah, I like that better. Cool. I feel like Paul at the beginning of this said he didn't have, he wasn't using the spreadsheets and he's like awesome at it now. <laughs> like, yeah, right. <laughs> I, that's all I do all day is spreadsheets. What are you talking about? <laughs> I live in spreadsheets. You want me to whip up a pivot table real quick? <laughs> <laughs> this is just awesome. Like now this is all ready to go right to the, the board. No, I would suggest um, you get rid of these that you're not using. It's just complicating the, the visual here, right? So sure. maybe like, like drag this line down here below or, you know, put it on a different tab. Yeah, just to make it look like we're saving so much money. It could be $20,000. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're getting a uh, education on uh, spreadsheets. <laughs> so that makes it makes it look a little bit better, but. I didn't like the way they were all mixed together. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll send this to you. What's our next, uh, anybody else? I would. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 I agree, yeah. Okay, gotcha. So the, the seal coating for the courts, the basketball courts and the parking lot are on hold. Right, so we're, yeah, we're waiting on, on more bidding on that. Um, so next was the calendar for the FSA. Um, Jim, I wanted to thank you guys because um, I, I did notice that the, uh, the uh, website was updated uh, and it shows the calendar. So, so we appreciate you guys complying with that. Yeah, no nice, problem. nice work, Jim. Thank you. Welcome. Yes, thank you. That's exciting. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, so next was the Eagle Scout project, which was approved by the board um, over the last meeting. Um, but there was some concern with the amount of trees he was putting in. Yeah, there was a stipulation there. Huh? Right, exactly. So what was the number? He, he was at four trees. Yeah. Correct? Okay, so he was going to install four trees. So that's, that's kind of what, what the goal is still. Material 790, but it doesn't say what's trees. In... Oh, here we go. Here we go. See, $173 for one tree, you know, that's, yeah, that, that's, that's very expensive. Well, it's gateway. I mean, that's, you know, I like yep. gateway, but they're a little pricey. So we're, we're looking for the bargain basement park size tree. Right. Right. And I just noticed that's a pagoda dogwood, which is a little different than the other three dogwoods that we have there. I don't know if, well, I mean, I'm sure I don't know most either. people. It's just the, it's a little different leaf shape design when they bloom, that kind of stuff. So it actually, I mean, the goal was to match the dogwoods. Um, and those are all what's called flowering dogwoods. And the, so it's a little different. It would, it would bloom later. I mean, the, the plus side is it add a little more diversity, but. Are you just showing off right now? No. Free knowledge? No, I'm just. So that's three hundred and seventy-three dollars, according to my phone. These these three prices is three seventy. So four hundred bucks for the trees. Right, and yeah, Where there's all his money going. He's getting nine hundred and forty dollars, and only four hundred for trees. Oh, uh, well, squirrel defenders. Wow, that's he needs to use an empty bucket or something. 
Yeah, a lot, a lot of times. Our go do is to work with the guy to try to get more trees. Uh, a lot of times you can, a lot of people just use uh, like old planters, you know, there's just like, which I have tons of in my garage. Okay. So you could probably cut that entire cost out for the squirrel defenders. But yeah, it definitely needs some tweaking out. I mean, I guess we just need to connect with him and try to figure out a way to get cheaper trees and and it's hard to you know we want to guide him and and uh but it, it's hard to um right we don't want to take over the project yeah yeah exactly that's his whole that's his his lesson is running a project and budgeting it and getting approval so right all right so so we're i mean where should we just leave this one at? we just need to so can you contact him? I don't have contact or Jeff, someone contact him and tell him, Hey, let's work on getting more trees. Like the board asked before he goes and buys them and shows up and then we're stuck with four trees. Well, he yeah. seems to really like Mr. Sachs. So if you could reach out to him. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely reach out to him. Um, and he's, you know, he's aware that, that, that we're looking to do that. So hopefully maybe he'll have some, uh, some other info because I haven't heard from him since that meeting. Yeah, for an Eagle project, that, that looks a little light. Plant three trees. Yeah. Right. There's <laughs> four. We get four trees. Oh, okay. Or two two hickories, but yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's real light. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So we'll, we'll follow up with that and hopefully get that going soon because you don't want to wait too long on planting trees. All right, so trail mapping. Mary, wait, are you? Oh, wait, before you. Oh, I'm sorry. Boy Scouts. Yeah. Um, uh, we had one guy who wanted to build a, a bridge on, on the new trail for the uh, biking club. And okay. The biking club wants him to get going. So have you heard from that guy? I, I, I need his contact information. Now, what's. Uh... Jeff, do you remember we walked with a guy out there, a, a, a Eagle Scout? Uh, to be honest with you, Paul, I don't think I was out there that day with you with that. When was it? Was this recently? No, it's like it's like six months ago. It was cold. It was in the winter time, like November or something. Hmm. It was yeah, the, I don't know. Oh, I know it was the same guy who did the boardwalk in the lower area. This was his younger son. Oh, so. Yeah, well, that's the brother of our, the Eagle Scout that we're talking about. Oh, oh, so this is the same guy. He's not doing the bridge. He's doing this. No, they're bro brothers, Paul. The the older brother was the one who did the the boardwalks down there. Yeah, I think I have the wrong guy. Then it's the wrong kid. I'll I'll have to find the other kid. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. So I just while you were talking, brought up a squirrel baffle. Twenty five bucks for this. So I think he's maybe overpaying for four of them for a hundred bucks using a lot of his budget. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Let me, let me, that's weird. Cause that's, and he said from Lowe's too, which is that's Lowe's. Yeah. So it's $26 a piece. And I think he had a hundred and something. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. Close. Maybe with tax. I don't know. Yeah. So um, if there's any bird people on the call, I don't know, is, is this, are these, you know, how critical, can we use the upside down flower pot instead? Those, those definitely work. Um, yeah. Steve, the guy who was on the call earlier, installs a lot of those bluebird boxes. And, and I think he does use those upside down flower pots. So I, I, I mean, I, I could ask him, but I think, I think they work yeah. fine. Yeah, he said he's a bird guy. So yeah, maybe oh, yeah. we could help this guy out by um, getting him a, yeah, but we do have an appearance issue, right? We want it to look decent, not like trash hanging in the park. Right. Yeah. That's the only issue with that. Okay. Uh, what's, the, what's the park right next to on 896 and the one in London, Britain by the uh, fire station? Nickel, Nickel park. Nickel park. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So they have all the upside down um, plant, you know, 
oh, little planters. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look great, but it doesn't look terrible either. And, <laughs> but what I did was going to say, I think we had talked about it, maybe I missed part of it because I, I lost the connection a second. Um, it looked like a Boy Scout project did it there at Nickel Park, but they were really good about putting the bird feeders, I'm sorry, the bird boxes um, in the mulch area by trees. So it was like a lot less stuff to be cut. So if, I think we had talked about that, just making sure that it's not going to cause a a dilemma for the for the cutting. What do you mean the mulch area? Do you mean like the rough? So, so like if there's a tree planted and then there's like a little bit of mulch around the tree, oh, okay. they put it there so that you're you're mowing only one area. You're not right. having to mow two separate areas or weed whack around the, the bird boxes. Yeah. So it, if you yeah. guys get a chance. If it's it just, too close to the tree though, the squirrel will just jump from the tree to the box, you know? Right, and also the, the installation is is to promote bluebirds, which don't want to be like right in a woods. They want to be out more in the open. Oh, so these were the open trees that they had planted. It wasn't a, a bunch of trees together. It was just like one tree, but gotcha. I'm not sure. Okay. But I, I guess if you get a chance, they it, it looked almost exact. When I was there the other day, it looked almost exactly what, you know, what the, the boxes were the identical boxes that you talked about with the screw on the side that you could open up to clean them and stuff. So it almost right. looked like it was a similar Boy Scout project <laughs> done in Nickel Park if you get a chance to look at it. Gotcha. Okay. All right, let's, let's move on. I'm sorry. Let's keep going. All right. So trail mapping. Uh, Mary, did you have any changes or updates on, on that project? Um, as of right now, we had scheduled to go out with um, Michael Little, but the weather didn't cooperate. So now we're waiting to hear back because he had some, some conflicts and personal stuff he has to do. So um, I think it's Paul and I are still just waiting to hear back from him. Paul, have you heard anything? No, he said he had to go out for like um, a medical procedure. So yeah. It's going to be a while before he's back. Mm. Yeah, so okay. we're kind of waiting on that. So but he's cool. going to come out, so. Yeah, yeah, somehow she twisted his arm to come out. <laughs> nice. Okay, cool. Um, and then Auburn Road, is there any changes or any, any updates on that one? No, no, no news on the, on the application. Okay. No news there. And then the only other thing I added, um, and thank you, Mary, for taking the time to put together that list, um, was the 10 acre parcel. Um, you know, we're, we're hoping that we can work with some, some landowners and, and help them or help guide them, um, to the right connections to, to, conserve their properties um so i, I mean I, hopefully we can actually utilize that list and all, all the hard work you, you put into that mary i can um i sent paul a, just an overview map of it too um is i don't know how much you want to get into it right now but i can make maps of like smaller areas so that we know like oh it's off of this road because if you look at the township it's kind of you can't really tell what's what. So if we really want to get into it, I can make maps that are at a um, larger scale so we can get like the landowner and all of that. Um, so it's a matter of what you want to see if you want like a map versus just the, the um, table. Um, gotcha. uh, what was that? I had it open, now I can't, I can't find it. I got too much stuff open. <laughs> So, um, Mary, I, you know, it's, this, this is good. I don't know how you do this. Are you getting this through the county or how are you getting all this information? Um, yeah, you get it through the county. That's great. So, yeah, that's cool. So uh, what she's got a legend here that the stripes mean 10, 10 acres, acres and multiple parcels. Red is multiple parcels. Green is 10 or more acres. So um, I was thinking maybe to make it more, um, you know, a little easier on the eyes is, is maybe start with, if you could assign all the preserved parcels one color, you know, okay. we don't have to look at them anymore. Like this one right here gotcha. is preserved. All these big ones down here for Strawbridge are preserved, you know, so they're off the table, right? This is Nan's farm. No, this is Nan's farm that's preserved. 
So we would want to take them off. And I don't know how you would get that list. The, the, the township has a, a map on the township website of preserved parcels. I have, and Natural Lands gave us a, a paper map that you could, I could give to you. I have it sitting right next to me here on the, okay. that's all the public and protected front uh, township parcels. Right. So what we want to do though is exclude them so that we're just looking at the ones that are left so we can prioritize because we want to make sure we're working on the higher priorities, right? All right. So Mary, you want me to get that to you? Yeah. This map? Okay. Yeah, send it on over. I'll see what I can do. And uh, Paul, you said the township has a list? Yeah, it's a nice map. I know it's not a list, it's a map. Okay. Right, Jeff. If I go to the website, Jeff, can you point me to it? I can try here. Um, Parks, Parks and Preserves. Conserve lands. Did you see where I was? Yeah. So oh, okay. they're, you know, these are the ones that we're not interested in anymore, right? The ones that have color, easements, homeowner association, land, land conservancy, and state owned, township owned. So they're out. Okay. So what That's we're nice looking at is, is the ones here that are big and open and can they be preserved? Are they a good target? Are they developable? You know, there's, there's some that are um, just uh, maybe a swampy mess and they couldn't fit many houses in there anyway. So we wouldn't really target them. Okay. So maybe, you know, I think the, the goal would be you come back with something and here's our top 20 parcels to look at. And then we start looking at those. Okay. That's good. I'm, I'm sorry, I was just looking through this. I, I don't know when the last time this was updated. Um, So this is this is the Kimblesville curve here with the the cow or the steers and the, the vineyard there. Yeah. Um, see that it shows the golf course. No, this is the golf course. Okay, Whew. I lost it there for a second. Sorry. <laughs> all right, what's the ne next topic? Okay. Well, that's all. That's all I had. So anyone else have any additional topics? Yeah, I do. Um, we got the official word that we got a $5,500 grant for the Bamshire Bridge. So I've been kind of dragging my feet and ordering materials and you know knowing how much the budget's gonna be, but now we definitely got the grant. So, and they only pay for things, you know, they don't pay for stuff before the grant deadline. So now we can spend money and that'll be reimbursable. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Congrats. All right. Um, anyone else? Any additional topics? Um, just while we were talking about maps, um, I, I guess I'm the official webmaster now. And I learned <laughs> through Civic Plus that they have something called clickable maps. So they're going to activate that for us. It's a free module. And then what you can do is you can click on a certain area of the park if we wanted to highlight the pavilions or the tot lots, and then it brings up a picture. So I just thought it'd be a neat way to promote the park and or the trails. But we're at the very beginning stages here of them activating it, and then they're going to train me how to use it. What was it called? Clickable Maps. It's with Civic Plus. Okay. So yeah, what is Civic Plus, Jeff? They host our website. There uh -oh. are. That's who our website is through. Okay, I didn't know that. So, yeah, they have a couple free modules that they're offering that I asked them to activate. So I'm waiting for that right now. So you know, like on Google Maps here. Well, it's not cooperating, but there's some there's some photos on Google Maps that you can see normally, like the Snowflake Drive here. 
And uh, there's some pictures down here on the White Clay Creek uh, in Bamshire that somebody took and posted to Google Maps, but for some reason they're not popping up. Yeah, and it can be used for a lot of things from road closures to, to anything. I just thought it'd be a neat thing to do in between everything else I do. Yeah, yeah. Given the permission to hunt uh, on the four township preserves during the last 11 years, um, our association is capped at 35 members, and we currently have 17 individuals on the waiting list to become members, um, some of which are township um, uh, members and some are not. Uh, the waiting list operates under a first come first serve basis, but Franklin Township residents have priority and jump to the front of the waiting list. I think there's only a few on there right now that are still waiting. Um, so during our 11 year tenure, we've had no incidents and have helped Franklin Township in many ways. Some of the ways we've helped um, the township, as you know, is beyond managing the deer herd is performing service projects. Uh, it was nice to hear tonight a number of times the FSA was brought up for helping. And, I, um, you know, on the call, on that December call, I know I heard Jeff talking about the Facebook site where you posted um, that you'd like to get residents to help volunteer. And he's gotten no response. He got no responses as of December. I don't know if that changed yet or not, but um, I know uh, Jack on the call, I think that was his name for the pickleball court. Um, but, other than that, uh, I don't know how many uh, are, but um, we've also done other things for the township, um, like taking calls from Jeff and Joan uh, when things are happening in the projects or they get calls from somebody else. We've gone, you know, in emergency, I wouldn't say emergency situations, but if trees fall across the, you know, trails or, or somewhere else in the park, we go down there with chainsaws, cut them up immediately, get them out of the way and move on. We also um get calls for people that are either trespassing or hunting on adjacent properties of the park so we go and check those out we've we've sent you know license plates numbers and and um i tried to address other things in the parks like you know dead animals that are found um we we kind of kind of go down there and see what's happening and clean those up as well um but um in addition to all that, uh, you know, we also send some of that stuff to the state police as well. Um, over the years, uh, so over the last 10 years, I don't have the information for the first year, but over the last 10 years, we've harvested 159 deer. And, and that's an average of about 16 deer per season. Um, each member of the FSA is required to perform two service projects each fiscal year in order to preserve their membership status in the FSA for the following year. So our service projects probably average around two hours per project. So that's a minimum of 140 hours of labor service that the township gets each year from the FSA, but it's generally much more than that um, because many members put way more than two projects in per year. Um, our meetings, this is the important part. Our meetings are open to the public and they occur every last Thursday of the month in the township office. So um, I, there's a couple questions that came out of the meeting. We welcome you to please come and join us anytime. We would address any questions or concerns you may have um, and hopefully get you very comfortable with the members. Um, I can say that, you know, uh, well, let me, let me address a couple of things. I, I'm, I'm sorry that Jennifer's, I don't see her on the call, but, um, I'm actually on the call, Jim. Oh, you I are? Just, okay. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. It's listed as Eric and Jen, but I'm on the call. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Um, so I, um, from the December meeting, um, I heard you saying that you want like the, I guess it was the first Sunday of the, of the first Sunday that was ever opened in Pennsylvania for hunting. You wanted to go for a hike. And then you heard a lot of shots in, I'm assuming it was Crossing Park and Franklin. Um, I was in Franklin that day hunting with two other guys from the FSA and none of us fired a shot. So all those shots you heard were either in the, the back of the winery or beyond like there's adjacent properties that, that, that people own. And that, I agree. I counted 
Um, I saw four deer running on the side of the winery hill and I counted 50 shots from those four deer running back there. It was unbelievable, but they weren't even on the township property. Um, so just to let you know, like that, that wasn't us, it was others. And, um, no, and I have no problem with it. I think it really just all stemmed from um, us wanting to make sure that the calendar was there so that, you know, that hikers could go out and use the park and then check the website. And it sounds like that's been resolved. So we really appreciate that. Yeah, I, I that, that you're right. That was done. Um, uh, but I, I want to assure you also that, um, that if, if you come and meet these guys, every one of us have had, um, you know, the, the, the mandatory PA hunter safety course, mo uh, most of us have had both firearms and archery hunter safety courses. So two hunter safety courses, and most of us have been hunting for our whole life. So there's, you know, we're very safe. I wanted to make sure that you heard that. And, um, and I want to oh, also, and I was going to say, Jim, I don't, I don't know how it came off. I, you know, December was a long time ago, but, um, my kids are hunters. My husband's a hunter. So we're well aware. I, I, I think we were just had talked about in the meetings, making sure that if that website was up and running, okay. was, I, and then part of it was when they were also updating the Franklin Township website. I think there was links that needed to be completed. So it wasn't all just the FSA. It was just making sure the continuity and that everything um, was up and running. And um, I, I mean, Paul had mentioned that, you know, there used to be a calendar and we just were looking for that calendar to be updated. Um, yeah. which I think yeah. that makes the yeah. Franklin Preserve yeah. accessible to everybody. Uh, yeah, I'll be honest. If I could take a minute to explain uh, that or not, ex not explain. And I know Jim German is on this committee um, and he's he is in our club, too. But um, I don't I don't want to have to have him always be representing us at this meeting necessarily. Um, so if I could just take a minute, we the old website. I don't know if this ever worked. Um, Number one, I don't know if what works now ever worked before, because even on the old website, I don't remember it being there. And we've had the new website for five years. And I know it hasn't worked on there. And for some reason, we all missed. We didn't think it was a requirement to have that on the front page of the site because of all the other things we have, like the, um, you know, the dash placards in our cars, the tags on the zone maps in, on the trailhead signs. So, the, so Jim, I, I don't mean to cut you out, but this, Paul, and it for sure worked for the first three years that I was a supervisor because we we made that a requirement. It was OK. It was a nice. I, I, I'm not I'm not dis, I'm not disagreeing with you. It, Paul, was, but, it was a nice setup. It worked really well. But then it, it yeah. kind of got lost uh, yeah. once the uh, deer management committee was disbanded by John. Well, no, I think it was awesome. lost when the website changed. That's no, that's when it was. Lost. I don't know when it happened. Right. I don't know. When it happened. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, it's there now. So you, you're right. It does. It's a moot point. It's there now. Everything uh, is in place. And um, but Paul, since you mentioned it too, when when Jennifer was making the comment, you had mentioned that you didn't want your kids in in the trails while people were hunting. But you also said that five years ago you wanted to bring in a hunting group from outside of our county and pay five thousand dollars or. That, that's the number you threw out there for hunting in the park. So these are people that you don't even know. No, that's, we are that's not true, Jim. That's not true. The, the outside group is a national management firm and they, they allow local hunters to pay a membership fee. You don't think somebody's going to travel from outside the County to come to our 19 acre preserve. So Yes, I do. They do it all the time. I, I, I hunt all over the place, Paul. People come from everywhere. Great, and, but but this was people who were willing to pay five thousand dollars to manage the hunting in our preserve, and we could have the right to only allow locals like you do. But I don't. I don't want to debate the past, Jim. Let's. Uh, okay. No, let's, that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Um, what's What's your capacity today with the? Uh, the FSA, because we're, we're not allowed to see the membership. So I'm just curious. So I've, I've been the secretary on the board for uh, almost the whole time that, that it's been there. I think I joined maybe uh, two, maybe the second or the beginning of the third year. And they and I've been uh, voted in as secretary on the board of the FSA since. Um, Good. Right, well, thanks for joining us tonight. 
Yeah. And um, the other thing is like, if, if um, you know, if you have any other, uh, you know, anything, the, any questions you have, you can address it with us. Joe knows how to get a hold of us. Um, I can send, you know, make my numbers available to anybody as well. But I, I want to make sure that everybody's comfortable with all these people. And I want to invite you to our open meetings so you do get comfortable if you if, if you don't feel 100% comfortable. Um, like I said, we're all your neighbors. Um, and and like I said, most of us live in this township or, or right, you know, right near you somewhere. That's all I wanted to say. And I didn't know how far. Um, all, all I know is last month we were... I know the uh, charter was supposed to be voted on and it, and it wasn't, I didn't realize it was just because of the website design uh, wasn't working. Now I do, but I didn't want to go unnoticed today. So. Oh, and, and I didn't, I didn't know that, that, that it had even been um, voted on. I don't know that it was even the website holding it up. I, I think it was just a request that I had made to have the website, but I didn't, I apologize. I didn't realize it had held anything up or if even this, Paul, do you know if that was even the case that that held something up? Uh, yeah, it was, it was a combination of that. And for a few months, we, since I guess, December, when you asked, you know, what are the rules around hunting and none of us knew. And so we were asking the township for what are the hunting rules. And so finally, uh, the night before the board meeting or the day of something like that, we finally got a hold of the rules for hunting and had, didn't have time to look through them. So when the board, you know, says, uh, you know, are they ready to, to go? Well, we don't know. We haven't looked. And so we knew the the uh, website was one thing that was missing, but we didn't know if there's anything else. And you know, looking through, I don't I don't see anything major that's that's missing or different. But you know, I I think over the next couple months. Um, you, know, you guys are going to ask for the license again this month and there's no problem. I don't think we have any issue with that. But over the next couple of months, maybe Jim as the liaison could, um, you know, talk about what the rules are as you guys understand them and, and get it clarified. Uh, so we understand because we don't know. Like Jim, you mentioned a, an armband The the hunting members used to come to the boards of supervisors and show us what the armband color was for the year and tell us this is what it looks like. Because right now, if you ask me or any of the members of the public what color the armband is, I'll bet you a hundred bucks they don't know, All right? So we need to get that information out there is what my point is. Yeah, and I, th I think, this is Greg, I think I think the only you know, concern that we have, and, and thank you, Jim, for coming to the, to the meeting, it is just compliance um, with what you agreed upon with the township um, but also, you know, speaking from my own perspective, just transparency, like I, I knew there was a large a group of hunters. That's all I knew was Jim and there's a large group of 35 hunters. That's really all I knew. So I, I appreciate you coming. I appreciate you introducing yourself. Um, you know, I know you guys do do volunteer work and, and we're all volunteer members on this board as well. So, you know, I think we all kind of have a, a similar interest in open space and, and the outdoors. And I would love to work with you guys more as, as far as, um, you know, the volunteer projects, you know, making sure we're cutting the right invasive plants, that kind of stuff. Um, Cause I do appreciate the, the hours that you guys put in. Yeah, I, I was, I enjoyed the opening segment this tonight too, because we have been going to Bamshire and cutting like, <clears throat> cutting like five foot sections of big thick vines they're like as thick as your arm out of uh, out of the vines you know choking these trees and but we haven't been spraying them with anything so i know the bottom portion of that's going to grow back um, right so right and there's know, also you know just making sure that it's the right species i actually brought this up at a previous meeting that you know, so not all vines are bad ones and and it'll save you time um there's a lot of good native vines that that will grow, you know, for 40 years right along with the tree and not actually kill the tree. So, you know, those we can just leave, let them be, they won't harm the tree and we can just move on to the, to the bittersweets and the, the ones that are really, you know, causing a, a, a bad impact. So, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I, I'm happy to have you guys on here and, you know, I, I would love to work with you guys more and, and, you know, just keep our spot, our open spaces as healthy as possible. 
Yeah. And, yeah, the, sure. and the only thing, oh, I'm sorry, Jim, the only thing I wanted to add was, um, you know, so Franklin Preserve is also be used, is being used by um, the biking club. They've done some work in the preserve. So maybe you could work with them and maybe they should come to one of your meetings to, I, I don't know, maybe it would be like a, a symbiotic relationship or something because the preserve is being used by other groups other than just, you know, the FSA. So that was our only concern was where the calendar started was because as these other groups are using the preserve, we just want to make sure everybody's working together to take care of the preserve, but also stay safe. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I totally agree. We, and we all understand that too. Um, and we welcome them to come anytime they want any, the last Thursday of every month in township building um, is when we meet. So there's uh the, and just for this uh to close this out we we have um there are rules that the township has for us and we also have a set of bylaws and a set of hunting regulations so there's three sets of rules that we go by um in addition to we're overarching the you know the the Pennsylvania rules on hunting always are overarching everything so um you know, any, again, again, any questions you might have, just, just come ask us. We're, and we're always improving things too. Like this year, when we post the signs on the properties for hunting, we are going to list that, um, that uh, it is illegal to hunt in any preserve, unless you are a member of the FSA. Um, we didn't put, put that on there before. And we've gotten calls that people are hunting in there and it's none of us because they're not on the, on the, on the, we're not on the calendar. So hmm. you'll be able to, anybody will be able to see that. And one thing too, that I wanted to mention is that I asked Joan two weeks ago, um, if anybody has called the township in the last five years and asked her to look into the, the calendar to see if anybody was hunting and she's never gotten one call. But now that you mentioned like the bikers are going to be in there, hope, but, but a lot of times in the winter, the bikers aren't there, but again, you know, it's there now. So um, we'll share it with everyone. No, yeah, we appreciate it. And I think a lot of that had to do with they were updating the township website. So we were just going through that, making sure that everything lined up on the website. So I think it works out great. Yeah, I do. The best case scenario is we all understand every, you know, everything that's going on. Yeah. That's all. Thank you so much. Cool. You're welcome. Yeah, and Thanks. I just want to throw one more thing. And uh, I'm actually kind of looking for somebody to help hunt on uh, possibly on my property. I have, I do a lot of plantings and there's a, a massive herd of deer that come through and attack everything I put down. So maybe I can talk to one of you guys. Um, I was talking to maybe one of my neighbors, but I, I, I definitely, uh, I'm looking for, for somebody to, to help call the deer and in quiet, wood. quiet, quiet, Greg, just tell me, just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we can definitely help you out there. And there's archery hunters that we could do it without making a lot of noise too. So yes. gotcha. All right. Well, just something to keep in mind. <laughs> I will. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> good. All right. Well, was there any, any other comments or, or additional uh, public comment? Can you hear me? This is Dennis Reagan. Yes. Uh, I'm part of the FSA too, and uh, Jimmy's a great guy. He, he spoke well. Uh, I just I just want to make it clear that I'm I'm more into this club to do the service projects. I love doing road cleanups and 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 just cleaning up the woods. If there's any trash, I love that more than anything. Just just being a protector of the land. Um, in the last five years, I've only gone out six times hunting. So I, I don't want I don't want anyone to think that the FSA is about our, our chomping at the bit to go hunting. We are not. I, I'm more into doing service projects and meeting up with a good group of guys and just hanging out and, and, and cleaning up the woods. So well, I just want you guys to know that. So Dennis, I, I got a great job for you, buddy. <laughs> there, are What's two, that? there are two deer carcasses on the yellow trail in Bamshire and they smell okay. so bad. Uh, I, I smelled them before I saw them and they're laying right on the trail. Like you have to we, step over them. We can go clean that up. I mean. Yeah, so you know, on, on Creek Road, there's a sharp curve where everybody- Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Every year they dump 
carcasses over the uh, bank and they roll down the hill right onto the trail. So if you go to the yeah. fishing spot and just not on the riverside, but on the Banffshire, yeah. you, you walk down off of Creek Road, there's two carcasses and they're pretty, they're pretty well gone. Um, there's still fur on the legs, but all the mm -hmm. meat gone, you know, but. Uh, we, we would be more, more than happy to do that. Uh, I am totally about giving back than, than taking. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dying to go hunting five times in, in, in the last five years is all I've gone, but just being a part of this group is, is amazing. And the, the volunteer service we do, I think it's a great, great organization. And just, just to close that up uh, last Saturday, the FSA did do their quarterly road cleanup along um, Chesterville and Creek roads. Um, there was, I think nine of us that showed up, not the best day to do it Saturday because it was the first day of trout fishing. Um, but you know, we ended up pulling a bunch of bags of, of trash and garbage, a nice 13 inch BMW rim and car tire. Um, so nice. It's just, <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's a couple hundred dollars right there. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, hey, and the other thing, Paul is I, we know exactly where they dump those, those deer carcasses it's got to be the same guys all the time i wish we could put a camera up there and, and <laughs> see the car backing up and dumping them out of there but um they do it every year we don't know who they are um and we have to call the uh, the game warden because we've addressed this before and i don't know how to we i don't think any of us know how to dispose of those carcasses um but i agree like they stink they're they're you know they're right near the the, the, you know, the creek. Uh, so. I don't think it would be half as bad if they just didn't roll onto the actual trail. That's trail. The <laughs> they oh, just right. got to pull them off into the weeds. Yeah, yeah. putting a, putting a yeah, camera sure up, putting a camera up there in the fall might not be a bad idea. It got stolen last time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> was it in that spot? Or I know one got stolen, but was it in that yeah, spot? And stole it high in the trees. Yes, Jeff. Jeff, where, where was it? There have been one or two that have been vandalized or stolen, but um, I'm probably going to order one or two more game cameras, and I think Jim has a good idea. You know, I'll certainly work with the FSA, and, you know, they can put it up for us. Mm-hmm. You need they a second camera to watch the camera. Sometimes you do. It sounds yeah. silly, but you do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, guys. Thank Any you. other public comment or? Yeah, it's John Auerbach. I got one comment on the uh, deer carcasses. Um, if those uh, carcasses could be moved into an open area, some open field, um, they would be disposed of very quickly by all the local wildlife, primarily the turkey buzzards. We, we have 50 acre farms. We have that issue all the time. And when they're out in the open, they don't last more than about three or four days and they're gone. So if you get them out in the open where the buzzards can see them, they'll clean them up. Yeah, I mean, the only issue would be <laughs> lead, lead poisoning if, you know, if they start eating that, that, that yeah, I, I, they do it anyway. I, I know at one time White Clay had a field back there secluded from the public where they dumped a lot of roadkill carcasses because I came out of the woods hunting and walked through that field and was amazed. I mean, there was 30, 40 deer across this field in various stages and mm -hmm. just the way they were. I, I knew they had been dumped, picked up and dumped there and it was behind a closed gate of the park. So. Mm -hmm. Hey, my name's Paul Smiley. I just wanted to uh, thank you guys for your support and let you know that uh, as a member of the club, uh, the meetings essentially start with safety, talk about safety the whole time and uh, end with safety. And as Dennis said, the deer hunting uh, kind of becomes a little bit incidental. I mean, we do get, uh, like we said, about 15 to 20 deer per year, but it really is about the fellowship and helping back to the community. And uh, I'm proud to be a part of it. And I appreciate whatever support you can give. And I'd love to see you at one of the meetings if you can come. Thank you. Thanks, Paul.
Any any other comments? All right. Well, with that said, let's uh, wrap it up. Thanks everyone for coming out. Thank we'll you. talk to you Thank soon. You. Thank you. All right. Thank Take you. care. Take care, guys. Thanks.